Jack and Robert are always going on about how big cars are getting. We're ditching sedans and hatchbacks and building more crossovers and SUVs. And I get it, I do. And that's why good news, this week we're talking about this charming little single seat EV that you might have heard of called the Tesla Semi. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the biggest EV ever made and it makes the Hummer EV look like a toy for kids. And Tesla seems to think it's a really vital strategy going forward, but is it? Should Tesla just stick to building cars? Does this even make any sense? Let's find out. I'm Ricky, and this is The Fully Charged Show. Like The Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia on March the 11th and 12th. Whether you call them semis or 18-wheelers, big rigs or lorries, there's no denying how important they are here in the United States. Here's some really fun facts, by the way. There are about 4 million semi-trucks in the US. They drive a total of around 400 billion miles every year. And they burn about 44.8 billion gallons of largely diesel and gasoline every single year. Starting to see why this could be kind of important to electrify. Also, there are about three and a half million truck drivers employed here in the US and semis move around 72% of the US's entire freight industry by weight. All in, they produce around $875 billion in gross freight revenue. But Tesla can't make Model 3s and Ys fast enough. So does this move make sense? Should they focus their production effort on passenger cars or the semi? Well, based on a tweet from Elon Musk, he claims that the semi can do about 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. And with a stated range of around 500 miles, we're talking about 850 kilowatt hours in battery storage, plus around 50 probably for reserve. So we'll call it a 900 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now, this is not confirmed. This is just kind of a rough back of the napkin calculation. Now that's enough to make 11 Model Ys with 81 kilowatt hour battery packs. So building 11 Model Ys would offset 148,246 gasoline miles per year, meaning we can get 11 gas cars off the road. Well, the average semi truck drives between 100 to 150,000 miles a year, but let's assume 100,000 to be conservative. Now, technically that would be less miles offset than by our 11 Model Ys, but factoring in seven miles per gallon for a diesel semi, things change quite a bit. The semi will replace 14,286 gallons of diesel fuel per year. The 11 Model Ys replacing 24 mile per gallon crossovers would replace 6,177 gallons of gasoline. So if Tesla with 900 kilowatt hours of battery capacity built one semi instead of the 11 Model Ys, they would prevent burning 8,109 gallons more of gasoline. And now the business case for the semi is starting to make sense. And this is why Elon mentioned semis are only about 1% of the vehicles on the road, but about 20% of emissions and 36% of all particulate emissions. So that's the environmental reason. Now let's talk about the actual experience for a driver. Any truck driver out there is going to love the Tesla semi or any electric semi. No more 10 to 18 speed gearboxes that you're clunking around constantly. Single speed, no transmissions. We think of diesel engines as these massive powerhouses, but really they're actually not. And they only have a operational RPM around 2,500 RPM. So they need a lot of gearing to be able to get going and lift and carry that 80,000 pounds of cargo. In comparison, the Tesla Semi will have a tri-motor setup similar to the Tesla Model S Plaid. They'll have carbon wrapped sleeve motors just like the Plaid. Two of these drive units are actually only intended for acceleration or when you really need extra power and they can mechanically disconnect once you get to speed. That means that the semi can maintain 55, 60 miles an hour on the freeway with just that one electric motor. In a lot of ways, they've taken everything that they've learned over the past decade building cars and put it into the semi to make it as efficient as possible. The end result is that the Tesla semi will be the most capable big rig out on the road. It'll have instant torque, no gear shifts, and plenty of power for going uphill, but most importantly, regenerative braking for going back downhill. This is one of the scariest parts for a truck driver. And if you've ever seen a runaway truck ramp down a hill, that's why, because oftentimes, 
they have to engine brake, and there's a limit to how much they can do that. The, the friction brakes on a, on a semi would just heat up and fail almost instantly. But the Tesla Semi doesn't have any of these problems. Not only does it not need those brakes or any engine braking, it can recharge the battery pack and regain some of that energy lost by going uphill on its way back down. And finally, they should prove to be way more reliable and require way less maintenance than diesel trucks. And you gotta remember for a truck driver, availability and uptime is critical. Any time that truck is not up and running is money that that driver is losing. Something about the semi industry you might not know is that between 10 and 25% of all semis are owner operators. That means that yes, we have Walmart and Amazon who buy and deliver their own trucks and hire employees to drive them. But a large percentage of these trucks are owned by little mom and pop shops that have to maintain all their own maintenance and keep the trucks up and running. And this is one of the questions that I have is yes, the fleet buyers are gonna buy these things by the droves because it'll make financial sense. And we'll get to why here in a second. But what about the small mom and pop owner operators? How are they going to receive the semi? Well, I think to answer that, we gotta break this down by cost. Tesla hasn't released official prices for the semi. And you know, it was around $180,000 for the beer configuration back in 2017, but a lot has happened since then. Like, runaway inflation and a pandemic and everything else. So odds are the test semi is going to probably cost between $200,000 and $250,000. Let's go with two fifty dollars again to be conservative. The average diesel semi is actually closer to $100,000. So that is a substantial increase in upfront cost. But how much money could you save by going electric? Well, factoring $5 per gallon for diesel, the average here in the US, and $0.20 cents per kilowatt hour of electricity, here's the cost breakdown. $71,428 per year in diesel at 100,000 miles per year, and $33,898 per year in electricity for 100,000 miles. The semi starts off $150,000 more expensive on day one, but drive 100,000 miles a year and it breaks even in just four years. And after that, the savings are just pure profit. And again, this doesn't account for maintenance, which I think is gonna be drastically cheaper too. But that's harder to quantify, but just from the fueling savings, Pretty impressive. So I think for big fleet buyers, it's gonna be a no brainer and Tesla is gonna sell every semi that they make. But there is one question that has popped up on a lot of news articles and YouTube videos that I've seen, which is all that extra battery weight is gonna eat into the cargo capacity and every pound that you don't have to carry cargo is again, money that you're losing. So how much of a weight reduction penalty will the Tesla semi have? Well, projecting that it'll be a 900 kilowatt hour battery pack and projecting out from Tesla's current pack volume density numbers, it'll be around 11,000 pounds just in batteries. But diesels aren't exactly light either. The Packard MX-13, which has 500 horsepower and 1,850 pound-foot of torque, is a modern diesel engine that weighs around 2,600 pounds. Factor another 800 pounds for the transmission and 600 pounds to carry enough gasoline for 500 miles of range, and we're at about 4,000 pounds. For the Tesla Semi, factoring about 1,000 pounds for the motors and other equipment, it'll come in at around 12,000 pounds compared to the traditional diesels, 4,000. But as Elon mentioned in that live stream, electric semis are allowed to be 2,000 pounds heavier. So a diesel semi can be 80,000 pounds and an electric semi can be 82,000 pounds. So the loss in hauling capacity goes from 8,000 pounds to about 6,000. Now that is not nothing. That is a significant amount of money. And depending on what you're carrying, that is potentially lost revenue hauling around dead weight in batteries. And that's something that every operator is gonna have to figure out. But there's so much to like about the Tesla Semi. When I did my video for Fully Charged on the canoe, we were at a Walmart location. And behind me, we had to move locations three different times because there were semis that were idling. Now, when these guys pull in for a rest stop, they leave the engines running, sometimes because they have refrigerated cargo that has to run, or I don't know why, they just leave them running. And the smell and the fumes from those idling emissions is just horrible. All that would be gone. Even if you have a refrigerated cab, the Tesla battery pack or any EV battery pack could keep that running without any concerns, right? So the value to the operator is massive. And you gotta remember all that idling is breaking down the engine without putting on miles. So the more you idle, the more time you spend in rough stop and go city traffic, that's all wear and tear on a diesel engine that is not being accounted for with the miles driven. So the real emissions reductions are probably gonna be even bigger. Now, before I let you guys go, there's two things that were not mentioned in the live stream that I was wondering about. The first, self-driving. In 2017, they made a big deal about driving in a convoy and full self-driving and how much less fatigue the drivers would have, but they've stripped any mention of self-driving entirely from the second presentation. 
I think the reason why is they want truck drivers to be excited and they don't want to sell a future where they're going to replace all of them with self-driving semis, right? So I think that kind of makes sense. But I do think that they have all the cameras that they need, including new cameras like on the front of the rig to make this thing a delight to drive. And I do think that in the coming years, they will have tons of self-driving features. The second feature that was kind of left out is the bulletproof windshield, which again, goes back to the idea of uptime. Two very common scenarios that keep a semi from being operable is tires, right? They're constantly going through tires, having to retread them and all the tire related maintenance and everything else. And the second is a windshield. They're massive windshields. They're very vertical and they're just prone to chips and things. And if you have a chipped windshield, you cannot drive a semi. And if it takes a couple of days to get a replacement, that is time and money that you're losing. So that bulletproof windshield concept that Tesla first showed off would have huge implications in this industry as well. And I'm hoping the semi does come with both of them. So let's kind of wrap this up, right? The Tesla semi is not exactly what Jack and Robert and us here at Fully Charged think of when we think of little tiny motoring, but you have to understand just how massive this industry is. And you gotta also think, a lot of people have said that larger rigs like this are not capable of being electrified, that we need hydrogen. But Tesla showed you 500 miles of true range from the Bay Area to San Diego, which I've done that drive. I know how, how it goes. They made it with the semi, which is pretty impressive at full weight at 82,000 pounds. So I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited. And Tesla's not the only ones in this space, by the way. Mercedes and Volvo and other companies are working on the same concepts. Even Nikola, we'll see what they do uh, in a future video, perhaps. But electrification is going to spread to every part of our lives. And this is a massive one that we cannot ignore. So maybe in the future, we'll do a follow-up video and test drive one of these if that becomes available. But don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you have been, thank you so much for watching.